Hey y'all, my name is Adina Barnett Miller, but I'm known to my students as Mrs. B. I've been passionate about West Virginia history for as long as I can remember, but my mom would tell you it all started when I was three years old and she bought me a West Virginia County's puzzle at Geno's Pizza. I've taught history in Ripley, West Virginia for over 20 years now, and I'm an adjunct professor who teaches college West Virginia history to high school students. Please join me for West Virginia History with Mrs. B, a field trip across the mountain state to walk in the footsteps of those who came before us. y'all it's West Virginia history with Mrs. B and I'm coming to you uh, today from Huntington West Virginia and uh, we're gonna talk about the name Huntington and what that means and I am standing by a very important statue this guy right here this gigantic statue is of Collis P Huntington the man the myth the guy who Huntington is named for and we're going to talk a little bit about Collis P. Huntington and why you should know him. So Huntington is a lot of things to a lot of people. It's where Marshall University is located. Uh, but first and foremost, if it wasn't for the railroad, there wouldn't be the big town of Huntington that there is today. And of course, you know, you have to have the man who has the vision for the railroad. And the first railroad to come to Huntington, West Virginia, is going to be the CNO Railroad, which was basically full-blown owned by this guy, Collis P. Huntington. Collis P. Huntington got his start, he got his notoriety uh, because he was part of Union Pacific in the 1860s, and he was the one that helped, one of the people who helped build the Transcontinental Railroad that crossed the United States in the 18, 1860s. And so in the late 1860s, He's going to hear about this railroad um, that runs from Richmond to Covington, West Virginia. Um, basically, they quit building it during the Civil War, and he says, we need to find a way to get from the Atlantic Ocean to the, to the Ohio River. And so he is going to come up with the brainchild that is going to be the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad. And so the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad, they're going to build two lines that we have talked about meet in Hawksnest in 1873, but those lines are gonna start at White Supper Springs where the Greenbrier is in Greenbrier County, and they're gonna come up following along Midland Trail, what today is US Route 60, and they're going to turn into, follow uh, up through Hinton, and if you've ever heard of uh, Big John Henry, he's gonna help build the Big Bend Tunnel um, for the CNO Railroad to go to Hinton, through Hinton, up through uh, the New River Valley, up through Hawk's Nest. And the other end is gonna be from what is now Huntington, West Virginia, named in his honor, um, from Huntington to Charleston, and then down uh, the Canal River, uh, down through Cully Bridge, and then to Hawk's Nest. And so the very first train that is gonna go from Richmond all the way to Huntington, is going to stop here at the Huntington Depot on in January of 1873. So this is the big 150th anniversary of the CNO Railroad making it to Huntington, West Virginia. So the crazy part is the CNO Railroad is not going to be the only railroad to come through Huntington. Um, the Chesapeake and Ohio will come through here, but also the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad after they build the two lines before the Civil War that go from um, Baltimore, D.C. then to Wheeling and then to Parkersburg. They're going to build a big long line that goes along the Ohio River and it's going to come here to Huntington. <laughs> and then in the 1890s, we're going to see another railroad, the West and uh, the Norfolk and Western Railroad, that is going to come through the deep coal fields, uh, through uh, Bluefield, up through Welch, and then in Domingo County, and we've talked about that at Mate One, um, into Williamson, and then it's going to follow and come up to Huntington as well. So it's three railroads meeting here in Huntington. You could get to like 13 different states from Huntington because of all the different railroads that came through Huntington. And so even today, um, the railroads play an important role. Role There is tracks right behind us. We are here at the depot. 
and there are tracks behind us today. They're controlled by CSX, which is going to be basically a, the CNO Railroad, the BNO Railroad together, and some other railroads make up the CSX lines. And so this building, which was the second Huntington CNO depot, it was built in 1913, um, is going to serve as CSX. Um, administrative buildings until 2016 and so this is a really cool place to visit here in Huntington it's not as touristy as uh, some of the other places in Huntington but this statue is worth coming alone to see this statue is going to be put here in the 1920s by Collis P Huntington's wife um, his widow at this point and so this statue was carved uh, by Gudson Borglum who is going to uh, build Mount Rushmore and when they dedicated this statue here in Huntington over 7,000 people turned out here at the train depot to pay their respects to Collis P. Huntington and all he did to build Huntington into the second largest city in the state of West Virginia. And so uh, even though this is not a real tourist destination, I mean this building, if you look at it, it's gorgeous and it's worth making a stop and come checking it out. So we're going to go and show you some other train history here in Huntington, West Virginia, but we definitely wanted to show you the CNO Railroad Depot and Collis P. Huntington, who is behind me. All right, so we have been talking about the fact that Huntington is a railroad town, and so the uh, Baltimore and Ohio Railroad is going to build a train depot of their own here in Huntington in 1887 and that train depot is right behind me. Um, it is now known as Heritage Station. It's been turned into uh, places to eat and shop um, but in 1887 this is where if you're on the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad and you're coming to Huntington you're going to get off the train and this is going to be open to passenger service um, all the way through the 1950s the chassis actually is going to run um, even longer than that um, and their last passenger train is going to be in the early 1970s so uh, they end train service here in, in the 1950s uh, early 1970s is when the CNO is going to stop their passenger service and focus more on hauling um, coal out of the state of West Virginia. Also here they have this really cool um, steam engine. Um, it has nothing to do with the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. This steam locomotive was actually used on the Elk River Coal and Lumber Company and uh, it is part of the National Register of Historic Places and so you can come check it out. Um, but it is not used on the Baltimore and Ohio line. It was used um, up from Charleston to haul lumber and coal. see this train a little bit closer up than other ones um, and it's not running I mean you can just see the amount of you know industrial labor like mass-produced labor as well as hand labor is going to go into building one of these big trains and I love this they have one of the train cars here from the B&O Railroad it's a Pullman car um, Pullman Square which is right down the street of course is named for the Pullman cars and you can see this car in particular has Collis P. Huntington's name on it. So if you get lucky enough to take the little special uh, fall train from Huntington, um, it gets on, you can get on the train here. Um, but most of the time this train station is not in use. So y'all know we love a good West Virginia history sign and this sign tells us more about the train we just showed you and it is an Elk River Coal and Lumber number 10 steam locomotive 
and it was built by the American Locomotive Company in 1924 and it was used to haul mine waste from Rich Run Mine in Wyden, which was in um, Clay County. Um, and it was retired from the Elk River Coal and Lumber Company in 1959 and moved here in 1977. So, you know, they stopped running trains, passenger service in 1959, but Huntington already stepped in and started turning this into a tourist area where you could go have some fun and learn a little history while you're at it. So they moved the train here in 1977 and it's going to be put on the National Register of Historic Places in 2006. So great place to go visit Pullman Square is right here. We're in downtown Huntington and you can see a lot and experience a lot of fun things um, in downtown Huntington if you come down here. Thanks y'all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to West Virginia History with Mrs. B on both Facebook and YouTube.